Hey guys, I'm super proud of this artwork and I can't wait to show you how I made it. So if you were interested in seeing that, stick around. Watch my previous uh, video on this artwork where it was just only a sketch. I actually didn't plan this artwork out like I usually do. It just kind of fell into place and turned out really nice. So I kind of, as you can see, usually I draw guidelines, but this time I didn't. And that was actually kind of a problem because the body didn't look correct for the longest time. And it's like, oh God, look at these proportions. They're horrible. <laughs> but overall, in the end, I ended up fixing it. I found a good reference that kind of helped me guide the pose a bit because uh, I was originally having the knees and the feet, but they just didn't quite look right. But the body type, I think, was actually not that bad by the end of it. So now I'm starting to flesh everything out. I ended up changing the clothes toward the end, but not by much. I really liked kind of almost a summer... Um, I'm not sure what to call these clothes. They're very uh, flowy, and I really enjoy making flowy clothes because they're so pretty and... They're a lot more fun to draw than stiff clothes. Uh, it took a while before I could really understand how to draw clothes, but I'm starting to get the hang of it now. And with the eyes, um, use the liquify tool to help you kind of shape the eyes a bit more. It's what I did. And when doing the hair, I vision like a bowl over the top of the hair character's head that the, that the hair just drapes over. Uh, treating hair like a liquid is super important when drawing hair because it takes the form and kind of molds over whatever it touches. It's good to always think in terms of 3D while drawing characters and having things on top. So getting the body type first, then adding the clothes, definitely how to go. Um, I'm adding the base colors here, kind of planning it out. I ended up changing some things by the end, but that's okay. It still turned out pretty good. So I went for kind of darker colors. So that way the, the oranges and the pinks and the yellows would stand out much more on the character. And I added kind of some gloss in the hair but like I said this is just a sketch at the moment so it's planning everything out I was originally going for kind of like a in a room with like light shining through but I ended up kind of changing that later because I wasn't quite satisfied with it and I didn't think it looked interesting enough so I did some post-processing to kind of make it look like the final artwork change the background to black that way I could see it a bit more but then I wanted to change it up a bit. So I did some light carving to plan out the lighting. And I found one that I thought looked a lot better. Added some rim lighting. Colored the eyes a bit. Some more kind of glowy bits. And some like wildness to the hair. I then start drawing water. Because then I was like, ooh, what if she's in water? That'd be pretty cool. So I ended up doing that, and it ended up being something that stuck. I was originally going for almost like a, a cool, like, like I don't know what to call it, but you see it a lot in Fate. Um, kind of like swords coming out. But then I changed it, and I went for kind of some leafage and foliage and some colors. I originally added too many leaves, and they just felt like there were too many. It, it didn't work. Having to go in and correct them. Um, I end up using an outline, the outline tool in Clip Studio Paint to kind of draw the um, the lines. That way I can just quickly draw leaves. But yeah, I think it turned out all right. Start adding the foliage behind her. And because there's a lot of light behind it, it like shines through the leaves. So I go for a lighter blue to make it look like it's coming through a bit more. I then played around with the background. Did I want white? Did I want black? Did I want yellow? I ended up finding out that I did want white because it kind of focused it a bit better. Then I drew kind of these red flowers that frankly aren't very good, but they get the job done. Now, here's where I start the line art. And whenever I do line art, the goal with line art is not to copy what's there. It's to improve, add, and refine what is there and make it better. I think a lot of people see line art as just like thinner lines and more complete, but in reality, line art itself, in my opinion, is a process of refinement and making it better than it already is. So whenever you have corners in line art, it's a really good idea to thicken them up. I tend to thicken things and thin things out manually because I think it looks better. 
Um, in the end, you could achieve what I do with pen pressure, but it might not be as clean or refined if you do it that way. So just that's just a heads up if you want to try to do it that way. I struggle to find out, find really what to talk about during the line art phase because there's really not much to talk about. It's just lining and artwork, and I, I run out of things to say every time at this part, so don't mind me. I'm just here for the ride at this point. I try to make all the lines flow very nice. Um, I want it to be clean and have that thickness that I've been talking about and just manually going in and making it look as pretty as I possibly can. I ended up changing the shirt where that way it felt like more like it was tied. I think it looks a lot better that way. I always add a lot more detail to the eyes in the lineup process, but I felt like this time the eyes were just kind of meh. It really didn't bring out the eyes as well as I usually do. And that's kind of an issue with the artwork. I'll, I'll be the first to admit I didn't do the eyes as well as I usually do. So usually when I draw line art for hair, I really go overboard with the messiness because I just love drawing messy hair. It's a whole lot of fun and it's always just something I love a whole lot. Remembering to drape the hair over the shape of the arm and whatever it's hanging off of. Um, also, if you want my color palette for this artwork, I, I always give out my color palettes for free for anyone who asks in the comments. I can link them to you and hopefully you'll be able to uh, enjoy and try them out for yourself. Also, I, I give away my brushes for free to download on a Google Drive account. So if you want to download those, they're free. You don't have to pay anything for them. They're just there for you to have and enjoy art. Also, if you've been enjoying this video so far, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. And thank you so much. Back to the artwork. So now we're adding all the base colors. I turned the background completely green. That way I can see any gaps in the artwork. I love watching myself color because it's one of those things that I've always enjoyed watching uh, coloring and coloring videos. It's why I watched a lot of speed paints whenever I was in high school. And uh, it always inspired me to get better. So now that I'm looking back at my artwork, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I'm Sometimes I look at it and I go, I wonder what my thought process was for that, because that makes no sense. But every now and then I end up doing something right, which is kind of cool. So I went for a much uh, more saturated color palette with the shading and whatnot. I ended up uh, playing around with a few colors and tried oversaturating it this time. I usually don't do that. I ended up kind of adding a gradient to the top and also the bottom. And then added a multiply layer on top to really uh, make sure the gradient shines through. Added a gradient to the hair, then another multiply layer, and we are cooking now. So I actually forgot what direction I had put the lighting while doing the hair. And I was like, man, I messed up. <laughs> but yeah, now we're starting to add all the highlights and whatnot. Doing the shading in the eyes. And here pretty soon we're going to start working on the plants and the flowers. Which were a pain in the butt. Oh my god. Every time I draw leaves, I just want to stop. I hate drawing plants and foliage i just find it boring personally some people may like it and if you enjoy it more power to you can you do it for me so that i don't have to do it anymore <laughs> but it is what it is in the end it turned out all right I end up kind of copy and pasting to be lazy, but then it end up looking weird, so I stopped doing it. <laughs> now we're just drawing the leaves everywhere so it's nice and thick and just lush. 
I really adore how the colors turned out in this artwork. I'm I'm super proud of it. Even if uh, other people might not like it as much as I do, I'm personally proud of it. I'm really a fan of how the colors turned out and how vivid and beautiful it is. Maybe I'm tooting my own horn, but I, I'm really proud of this one. It makes me super happy how it turned out. Now we're adding the post-processing, a little multiply layer just to add an extra an extra oomph to the shadows. Then adding some add glow layers, some dust, some uh, wetness to the character, some a tonal curve, and just check in from the original colors to see if I really like it or not. Then adding some level correction and some uh, chromatic abrasion. Another tonal curve. I really kind of overbaked this one, but in the end, here's the artwork. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.